What if you could change your life? What if the sorrow could become joy and the darkness the light? What if you could heal not only yourself but those around you? Well, you can. This is Alchemy, and these are the Alchemy Sisters. Join psychic Jenny McDaniel and spiritual advisor Mandy Elam for a magical one-hour journey into esoteric spiritual discussions. DPR presents... Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Alchemy Sisters. You are all here with Mandy and Jenny. Hey, Jenny, how are you tonight? Doing pretty good, Mandy. How about you? Oh, I'm good. I am so excited to welcome our guest. Um, She is a fantastic master channeler and psychic. She works with the angels. She's been studying Lumeria very close hand and channeling them out their goddess lately. Um, And her name is Donna Carroll. So welcome, Donna. Thank you, Mandy. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me on. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, thank you. Oh, man. We're so excited. I'm um, I'm mostly, I'm excited about everything you have to offer us, but I would love to jump right in and hear about what you've been studying and learning and what's been going on with, um, with your connection to Lumeria and what's been coming through for you. Oh, fantastic. You know, that makes me really happy because, uh, Lemuria, I I learned about Lemuria, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. I learned about the fall of Atlantis, the fall of Lemuria. Uh, But I really got information about the culture and the civilization when I channeled uh, the Lemurian Collective about three years ago. And they gave me the history Well, you know, a brief history of Lemuria. And basically what they told me is that Lemuria was established as a way for the light to come down to planet Earth and and bring uh, the higher vibration to planet Earth because at that time, and I mean, this was close to 100,000 years ago, because at that time, the energy, the vibration on Earth was pretty low and the people... Uh, were not really connected to their heritage, to the stars, to the light. And so Prime Creator uh, decided to bring herself, and, you know, this was a feminine-oriented culture, so the Creator came down as a feminine aspect. But anyhow, she came down to Earth and created a bridge from Source to Earth, And then what happened, according to my guides, is that all of these light beings, these creator beings, um, came down within her bandwidth, if you will, and they established the culture of Lemuria. And the culture, of course, was very heart-centered. The beings were physically incarnated, but however, they, they told me it was not as a dense, not a not as a dense physicality, uh, lighter, but still physical. Uh, the beings were very tall, and of course they were, you know, they were like uh, very high, high level star beings, Pleiadians, and uh, you know, I think they came from the the creative realms, creator realms. And so they came down and they established this culture, and it was an oceanic culture. And they created, they created different animals, they created different plants, they brought in codes, and they, uh, their main focus was the cor- fertility, um, bringing in life, bringing in the higher codes of consciousness and establishing them, grounding them into Mother Earth and making them more physical. But what I thought was really interesting is my guides told me that this was a hologram and it was a very uh, separate culture. It was physically, vibrationally separate from the rest of the earth. And then there came a point in time because the whole, the whole program of Lemuria was to bring more light um, and the feminine principle back to the earth. So at one point they established pathways. 
in other words, what my guides told me is that Lemurians had the ability to, I, I forgot the term, um, remote view. So Lemurians could, and they could go out of body. So they could go out into the rest of the world and see what was going on. And they would study different cultures and they would look at the people and then they actually created bridges from Lemuria to other civilizations on the earth. And this is a long time ago. Um, and then the Lemurians would actually decrease their vibration. They had to decrease their vibration. And they would get into boats and they would sail to other cultures and interact with other peoples. And their main goal was to bring love back to these cultures. You know, they wanted to bring a feminine principle. And a lot of these people that met the Lemurians were frightened of them. They tried to attack them. They tried to kill them. It was, it was not going to work, though, because they were advanced star beings and they could put out, they had shields. They could protect themselves. They could uh, defend themselves. Other people worship them as God. They really weren't interested in that. They were really interested in um, spreading their vibration. So eventually what happened is the Lemurians, if you will, infiltrated these other cultures and um, they would interbreed with other people on the earth. And they did that so that their vibration could go into those people's genetically. So it could be passed down. Uh, and so basically what happened is the Lemurian culture spread out through the entire uh, planet and eventually it went away or it, the, the continent itself sunk. But that's another, that's another story. We can get into that if you will. But so it was really a program by prime creator who incarnated as the mother goddess. The mother goddess was worshiped by the Lemurians. And uh, then they spread that culture to the rest of the world. They, it, you know, they 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 mixed with other cultures. So many people have Lemurian DNA all over the world because of that. So interesting. Um, you know, we have another show on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. It's called The Cigar Man, and they were talking about ancient Egypt and how some of the first pyramids that were created were much more stellar than the ones that came after that humans tried to um, replicate. So when you say these bridge going to different um, civilizations, I instantly went to the first pyramids that were, were created. They clearly had some um, insight that the rest of the humans didn't have and didn't have after that. So very interesting. And then, uh, you know, seeing how I can look back in history and be like, how would they have ever technologically done that? We can't even do that now. That would be a, an example of how they did that. They had help from the Lemurians or maybe even aliens or, or how, whoever was visiting them. But then I have a quick question for you, Donna. Um, I don't know a lot about it, but I know Mount Shasta has this kind of ethereal um, population that might live in the mountain of Mount Shasta and it sounds like it has some essences of the Lemurians that you were discussing. Um, do you know much about that and can you pair them together or do they correlate? Um, yes, they do. The Lemurians uh, went to Mount Shasta and the beings that live, uh, there are beings that live in the mountain or light beings that are considered mm -hmm. Lemurian. My guides tell me they're Lemurian hybrids. Awesome. So, yeah, they told me that they're, you know, the Lemurians came to Mount Shasta and probably uh, bred with the indigenous people, and they're hybrids that live there now. Interesting. Yeah, there's uh, a big draw there. It's kind of like Sedona, Arizona. It's got a big spiritual draw, and people go visit it and get the energy and the essence and the vortex or whatever they're looking for. I haven't made it up that way, but be interesting to check that frequency. And then um, do you think that Atlantis was um, going down or happening when the Lemurians were doing their light work? Do you think that was going on at the same time or a separate time? Um, I think 
the end of the Lemurian civilization correlated to the beginning of the Atlantean civilization? Uh, okay. I, feel like it, I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't channel information about that, but mm-hmm. that's what I've read. And that kind of makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, my guides also told me that the Atlantean civilization was in response to uh, the male domination in the Atlantean culture was mm-hmm. in a way a karmic balancing to the female dominance in the Lemurian culture, because what happened in Lemuria is that um, essentially when the Lemurians went out and they met the rest of the peoples on earth, their vibration had to be lowered. And um, the Lemurian culture itself, I mean, it was a high level culture. Of course, people were telepathic. They could heal people they could heal animals they had tremendous spiritual capabilities but as they lowered their vibration and and went out and lived with other people their vibration came down and essentially what happened is that they started to put too much emphasis on the feminine that they considered women superior men not as uh you know men as Second, not second class citizens, but men, men were not uh, revered like the women were, especially childbearing women that could bring in life. Okay. So um, what happened is uh, there was an imbalance in the culture where they were, they were putting women first and that that's not really, really what is, divine the divine is the divine masculine and the divine feminine united together and so the society denigrated into something that was you know many people think in our society today that the patriarchy the patriarchy is leaving but they think that there is an unfairness towards women maybe an unfairness towards children that men dominate well that was the exact opposite in in the Mm -hmm. ancient Myriad times towards the end of the culture so everything I have a guru and everything according to my guru is karmic so what we're experiencing now and what they experienced in Atlantis which was um, an emphasis on the technology an emphasis on uh, the male traits of action and I don't know I mean I don't, I don't want to get into a male versus female thing but you know you understand what I'm saying yeah uh, Absolutely. That that this is we we have to balance it out, and it gets balanced out in the civilizations. So we're probably balancing Atlantean and probably Lemurian energy right now. I would think so. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me for sure. I was when you were saying that, I'm like, oh, look at where we find ourselves right now. Very much on the opposite spectrum of that, and it looks like, you know, when I look back at all the energy exchanges that we've had on this planet, it has it's gone back and forth. And I think it's wildly important, important to balance it. Like you said, the masculine and the feminine, the divine, the divinity in both and the equality of both and um, merging them is that's where the power is not one above the other. Yeah. We've talked about that. It's very important um, because it's easy to get caught up in the um, kind of like feminist movement and um, want to interject yourself ahead of the game as opposed to just equal and fair and right. Yeah, I agree. And I think that what's happening with the twin flames, the twin flames are reuniting at this time and we each carry a masculine and a feminine energy, but obviously I have, more feminine energy in this lifetime, I think, because I'm female. So, for instance, the twin flames are reuniting, the masculine and the feminine, to do exactly what you said, to integrate the energies and to bring out the divine wholeness of the being and to bring that into the female in the relationship and the male. So, um, so yeah, I think that's what's going on now with the twin flames is we're going to transmute all this and transcend it all. And this has gone back for, I mean, at least a hundred thousand years, mm-hmm. the conflict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I, when I do my channeling very often these days, um, Mary Magdalene or a trilogy of, 
um, Mary, Mary, and their and Mary's daughter Sarah, Jesus's daughter. They'll come in and they're very, you know, and they're not on the edge of their seats because they don't have bodies and they don't have seats. But that's just a metaphor. They're very interested in what's going on on the planet right now because we're we have I have a guru too, I have a teacher, and um, the way that I look at it, the way that he looks at it, is that we will in this lifetime um, balance this out, bring more heart energy, more compassion, which will just naturally even effort, you know, a lot of things out. And we are hopefully, and there's anything could happen, but the way that it looks and the way that energy is moving is we will do that in this lifetime. Hence, it kind of reminds me of how Lemuria put the bridge and brought in all the light beings because I can see a lot of us here right now, and it will take a lot of us because the world is, you know, a bit egoic. So it's very exciting times, and um, Mary Magdalene likes to say, well, I was in the game, to, you know, over 2,000 years ago, and it's it's been going, and, you know, I'm making my presence known so I can assist anyone who's interested in having assistance. And I was like, yeah, we need we need Mary on our side. Yeah, we got this. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So it's, it's just vital. It's so important. And it's funny because Jenny and I, we discuss this all the time and, you know, raising the heart, you know, over the ego energy, but that doesn't mean creating an imbalance. You know, um, when we talk about fighting the patriarchy, if you will, and all of that, it's all about raising the feminine within each and every one of us because we've gotten so hard and we've gotten so disconnected. And though we're all talking all the time via technology, you know, the actual human connection is missing and like that little bit of light and, you know, we're seeing it little by little rise up and it's just really exciting to, uh, to see all this happening. And then Donna, one of my other groups, I'm, um, I uh, study with Rebecca Campbell for, she, she wrote the book Rise, Sister, Rise, all talking about, you know, rising the divine feminine, and it's amazing, and she's been talking about um, calling in a lot of mother goddess energy, too. She's been working with uh, Ashun in particular, and uh, we've been doing lots of, you know, guided meditations and things to call in that energy, but I just keep seeing this overwhelming um influx of mother goddess energy and messages and i would just love to hear more about what you have to say and what you've experienced with that well i think um the mother is so i mean it's really you wouldn't none of us would be here today without our mothers birthing us conceiving us birthing us and then raising us and the mother is so important, of course, for uh, nurturing her children and um, teaching them and bringing them up in a way that uh, her values are reflected. And so everybody can relate to their mother and hopefully people have positive relationships and memories of their mother. But what's happening now is that um, I just started channeling the mother goddess, and this is the divine mother of all. This is who we all come from, all all of creation. So it's our mother in a very real sense, and the one that carried us here um, to create. I mean, we're all creator beings, and we all we all carry tremendous power, tremendous light. But in my philosophy, there was one being the goddess who gave birth to all of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, And some people agree with that. Some people don't, but that's what, what I've been channeling and that's what my guides tell me. So, so it's really important to um, just give thanks and gratitude to your mother from where you come from, uh, in the divine realms. And so I'm channel, I guess I'm channeling next Friday and the whole purpose of the channeling is to bring in the mother goddess. And what she's going to do is uh, activate the divine Lemurian codes in people so that they can connect back to that and reawaken themselves to that energy. Now, not everybody on the planet has Lemurian ties. I've worked on people here that have never incarnated here before. Hmm. You know, they're newbies. And I'm trying to think, it's not, it's rare. I would say, let's see, maybe, John, probably two people that I know for sure that have not incarnated here before. And typically they're volunteers. One 
my guides told me was a teacher of the Arcturians. So he came in to do grid work on the planet and also to uh, bring his energy here for the Arcturians who who were his, I guess you could say, students. Or they, He came from a very far away place. I have no idea where it was, but I could feel that it was very far away. And I don't, unless I know the name for it, I can't say it or pronounce it. And then another gentleman that I, and it's funny because both guys that haven't been here before were men, and one of them uh, was Venetian. So there are higher beings of light that live on Venus in the mm-hmm. higher realm, and um, that energy is coming in very, very strongly right now. As well as the Lemurian reawakening, there's a whole influx of there's going to be a whole influx of Venetians that are coming to the planet because I've channeled about this and they are here to bring the Renaissance, the Renaissance of culture about. So they're going to bring in higher forms of art, higher forms of food, higher forms of um, fashion culture, you know, the Renaissance in Europe, that was kind of the high point for art in Western civilization this is going to be a renaissance, but in a whole new way, a divine renaissance. So um, so there's a lot going on. And one thing I also recently discovered was that the Arcturians are here to be midwives. They are here to birth the new earth. Um, and many of the Arcturians that have come in have only come in In the last century, like um, the mid-1900s, they started coming in after the atomic bomb went off, and they're being born now. But after the new Earth is established, they're not going to incarnate here anymore. It's really the Venetians that are going to come in and bring in um, the higher forms of light. So it's really interesting to me because... (laughs) Uh, You know, you catch snippets, you catch a little bit of information here, a little bit of information there, but this plan is so extensive, Um, going back, God knows how long, and then it's bringing in all types of star beings from all over the universe, multiverse, so it's it's fascinating to me, and I... (laughs) That's I I always want to understand more and know more. I have a I have a strong thirst for knowledge, and <laughs> I don't know if that's a strength or a weakness, but um, <laughs> but that's 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 what that's what drives me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. You know, I um, I also agree that there are different waves of beings coming into the planet and you can see it um, a little bit in the millennials how they have a little different approach to things they have a little different mindset and then the even younger ones the kids that are like you know eight and under I can really sense that they even come from not necessarily come from because I think we all come from the non-physical but I think that they're regular residents in these hierarchy solar systems like the Pleiades and the Venetians and the Arcturians. I do see that essence in the different generations and I'm glad they're here because um, we we need them. I mean, we're the pioneer soldier types. We're laying, you know, the footwork down and then we'll need someone to pull the bucket of water up once we or up and out once we get it filled up. So um, it's going to take all kinds and I'm glad they're here helping us. Oh, yeah, we need them. We need them definitely. Mm-hmm. We also need them because they don't have the karma. So yeah. I've been here so many lifetimes. I'm I'm the one that's been here again and again and again. And, you know, I have a lot of karma to clear because of that. I had, you know, in this lifetime, and I'm sure all my other life, but a lot of emotional healing, a lot of healing work to do, right? The beauty of these new beings coming in, the Arcturians, and some of them have, have come in more than once. This might be their second life, but um, and the Venetians coming in is that they don't have that karma, and so they can really uh, establish things without any hang-ups. You know, it's mm-hmm. they have the strong willpower, and they also have the well, they're connected. They're connected to, I mean, they might not be consciously connected, but yeah, they're very connected and they're going to bring in all kinds of higher ways of living 
they're going to bring in the new technology, the new technology. And the adult that I worked on, who was Venetian, he was a forerunner. I was told he was a forerunner. And so now the Venetians are starting to incarnate the babies being born. So, and I know I've read about crystal kids and rainbow kids, but um, my guides are channeling to me about Venetian. So, and, you know, I, I do read other people's works and I, of course I've read uh, books, but I always um, try to stay open and just, and just let the information Oops, flow we're, in. We're, 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 are, are you um are you getting her fading out a little bit, Mandy? Oh, just a touch, yeah. Okay, cool. No, sorry, sorry, Donna. I was it was kind of going out a little bit, and I wanted to make sure we got you back in. Oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. No. I, was, I was just like lost in your words. It was just such beautiful imagery and just such a nice idea to think about what's coming. And I love holding space too. I'm always talking about, and I'm I'm very similar. I love to learn. I love to keep an open mind. I love to hold space for whatever can be possible. And it just gave me so much hope and so much excitement to think of these new beings coming in without all that karma, without having been on Earth so many times. Because that's what Jenny and I work with the most is helping people to to you know cut some of these ties and and do their best and be their most authentic selves in this life. But it's hard with a lot of the stuff that been connected in past lives so and I love the idea of the, the renaissance coming that's just a fantastic fantastic visual yes it is oh, thank you thank you Donna oh sure yeah I'm really excited about it too I don't know how long it will take but this the new earth um, is going to be established um, I would say by star beings and star beings typically that have not been here before. So mm. makes sense that they would have less karma having, you know, incarnated several times in, um, you know, the, the Venetians or with the Venetians, because when we're here in this three dimensional, very heavy karmic egoic planet that we are, you can't help but pick stuff up, you know, and you can't <laughs> help but just be all up in it and, and be exposed to it and, and create karmas. And, and it's for good learning. It's not a punishment by any means. It's for good learning and going back and forth and understanding. But I can see how it would be wildly beneficial to get a crew or a majority of, a, of the crew has less um, – heavy three-dimensional karmas. Now, of course, they're going to have stuff they work on. You know, they're going to be human. But it certainly um, will be a lot easier to skip through, you know, what most of us dealt with through our teens, 20s, and 30s. That'd be nice for them to, you know, kind of skip a little bit of that and they could get further, um, you know, in their involvement in, in, in cr- helping us create a better world. It's very interesting. Oh, well, I, I feel like the beings coming in, you know, they do take on – a human body and they do inherit um, the bloodline of their parents and karma is passed down genetically mm-hmm. uh, somewhat. So they're going to have to clear some of the karma that they've been from their parents. But I, I, just, they, I think they will have a much easier time because they haven't, they don't have all the hundreds or thousands of past lives that they have to clear and integrate. That, that we've probably been doing for lifetimes right now, but mm-hmm. this is the main lifetime because we're ascending, and my guides are telling me this is the most important lifetime because you're ascending, mm. you know, as a group, as a mass. So, so it's very exciting, yeah. So beautiful. Well, for those of you who are just tuning in, you are here with the Alchemy Sisters. We are here every Thursday night at 9 p.m. on uh, Drew Pillow DPR Radio. You can find us on any Blog Talk talk app as well as Blog Talk Radio. Um, Ladies, we do have a caller. Her name's Linda, and she's been on on hold for about a half hour now. Um, and I told her that we would be willing to take her call. If anybody else is listening, we are only taking one call tonight. So if you're going to try to call in, we're just taking the one call. And then uh, after that, maybe we can hop into the angel realm. How does that sound, ladies? Perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Careful. All right. Let's invite Linda on. Hi, Linda. Hi there. Us? Yes, I'm here. Thanks so much. Oh, good. Thanks for holding. You are here with... Um, Jenny and Donna and myself, and we're wondering how we can help you. 
Well, uh, first of all, I just want to say how much I have enjoyed the the thirty minute conversation. It's it's exciting and it's interesting and and I almost hated I hated for it to stop. It was so good. So thank you so much for all that <laughs> wonderful, exciting information. Um, my question. I'm hoping that you might give me some guidance or some understanding as to what I can do uh, with a knee issue that I'm having with my on my right leg. Um, my right knee has bothered me for probably about 12 years, and I've really delved deeply into healing it myself, finding the core beliefs behind it. Uh, working with natural alternative uh, methods and modalities, and it still is um, not allowing me to do what I'd like to do in the fashion that I'd like to do it. So do you have any insight as to what my next step should be? Um, oh, go ahead. Um, okay, so this is Donna Carroll, and what I'm going to do is bring in my guides and see what they have to say. So at Wonderful. this time I bring in oh oh sure I bring in Archangel Raphael and I bring in Archangel Ariel and I ask for Linda's highest and best healing and channel and guides to come forth Amen Amen So your knee is. Um, uh, bothering Linda. you because of yes, uh huh, Linda, Linda, your uh-huh. knee is uh, it's a past life karmic issue, um, and it, what I'm hearing is that the knee problem you've carried through the last five lifetimes, and you've been releasing a little bit each lifetime in this knee, okay, and so this is kind of a long term situation, meaning it's going back more than one lifetime. Um, And so I ask Archangel Raphael to bring up the root of this. Okay. Uh, Okay. So, um, so basically, um, you were, you were basically, uh, involved in a, um, situation where you were undergoing some, torture or some uh, cutting off of the knee. So you ha- actually at one point in your past life had your your uh, knee cut off. You had your le- bottom leg cut off. Okay. And so mm-hmm. basically um, so what they're suggesting is that that you go into this lifetime and actually heal it, that you heal the condition that happened in that lifetime and that you release the emotional stress, the pain, and that that's, this ultimately will heal your knee because it's emotional. The reason why you're, you're having issues is because of the emotional ties that you're carrying back to that lifetime. Okay, so uh, what are they recommending as far as the actually doing the healing? Are they suggesting past life regression or an Akashic record reading? Or or um, how do I go about this best? You can do um, an Akashic record reading um, and then go into that lifetime, encompass the energy, and then have it released um, with a healing by a healer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's what I'm, what I'm thinking, what I'm getting. And then um, 
there's just a lot of anger and resentment and um it, what I'm getting is like you almost want to <laughs> I know this sounds silly but you almost want to kick the people that oppress you and you want to just hurt them and so all of that anger and resentment and the kicking is being the energy is getting stuck in that knee okay. and you were trying to, you were trying to kick the, you were trying to kick the people you were fighting back and you have a lot of you know so it's basically energy from that lifetime, middle age. Okay, well, I so much appreciate that information. It gives me a really wonderful starting point. Thank you so much. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Happy healing, Linda. Take care. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Aw, that's tough, you know, and I, I just want to say to our listeners, um, many, many, many of us have had a lot of lives and a lot of, there's, you know, lots of physical things that come up. Obviously, in our country, we're at an all-time high of physical issues happening and diseases within the body. And, and much of that is, is due to past life. You know, a lot of it um, can happen here and definitely progress and get worse through our experiences in this lifetime. But, you know, there are people like Donna and, and Jenny and people who can help you with that and help you to navigate it. And, uh, and I appreciate Linda for holding space for, for healing herself with that because you absolutely can. And, um, and yeah, and you just have to dig a little deeper. You have to be willing to, to understand and see what happened on the darker sides. But uh, it all comes back to self-love for yourself. And that's, that's how it, you end up healing overall. So It really does. And one thing I want to say is that, you know, I have an issue in my left shoulder. And, you know, anyhow, this, this issue I have is, and I've released it. I've gotten help from healers, and I've released it with my Arcturian guides. So it's getting better, right? But um, either this issue came with me through all of the lifetimes that I've lived. I think it was about 2,000 or 2,500 years ago. This is a very old injury, right? Mm. Sometimes what we do is we put things on the shelf. I'm not going to deal with it. You know, I might have not dealt with this issue, in my last lifetime or my last several lifetimes, but now's the time to deal with this old injury from all that long time ago. And so it's coming up for release, but ultimately we're releasing everything in this lifetime. So if you have something that you put on the shelf for a while, or maybe you didn't, maybe you, I think she was releasing a little bit each successive lifetime, but, um, this is the lifetime where we have to release it because we're ascending. So we don't have really a choice. Well, it's going to come up. I can tell you that makes a whole lot of sense for me and my body. I, uh, I've had all kinds of wild, crazy injuries and, um, and through Jenny's help a lot and through lots of other healers and helpers, you know, I'm making a lot of weight, a lot of headway in that. And then there's also um, lots of actual ascension symptoms. Mm -hmm. Um, things that are happening, A, for that we're clearing up from past lives, but just like the chemistry within our body is taking a heavy hit while we're like up leveling and it can be really exhausting for people and painful at times from what I've been hearing. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, we entered the photon band, I don't know how many years ago, but basically what's happening is we're getting pulsated or, imprinted or we're receiving energy from our son our our son which is you know sending us codes of information to start enlightening us to start um, the ascension process and as these codes come into our physical body they're starting to impact us um, and our son is actually fed by or in relation to the central sun and the Pleiades, Alcyon. So essentially we're getting pulsated and I don't know what's what's the word, but um, by the central sun, the central sun is sending its energy to us and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, we're grounding it in the physical body and we're integrating it into our bodies and it's, it's not, the simplest thing that that you can do is mm. it can be very you know it can be 
exhausting. So, um, but, you know, I, for me personally, I feel like I have more energy now than I did three years ago or four years ago or five years ago. Um, but I think we're all progressing at different rates and we're all on different timelines. So it's individual too. True. But I but agree with the horizon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I agree. Jenny, did you have any comments or anything that you're feeling about speaking about right now? Well, um, I think all this is fantastic information, and I agree. I agree that a lot of our um, physical ailments and disease and disorder are karmic. And then I also agree that um, it can become physical. So for that woman that had called in, Linda, I was just picking up a little bit while Donna was doing her beautiful reading there, and I was kind of doing some psychic surgery and looking at the knee, and it didn't look like it had some level of inflammation going on um, and a little heavy dominance in the yang energy, so it sat on her right side. And very often the energy or the um, karma that kind of resides in that area flares up, and because it's flaring up, it's showing up in a physical body, so it can become very, very physical, too. So then now we're coming at it from a dual or even three or four angle um, look because we're in a physical body. We're experiencing karmic and spiritual healing, which very much much is associated with the physical. So I was going to suggest to Linda, too, if she's still listening, consider um, some lovely anti-inflammatories like curcumin or turmeric or something like that and icing it and giving it attention because a symptom in the body is not a punishment. It's simply a cry for help. Our body doesn't talk. The only way it talks is it gives us signs and feelings and symptoms and things like this. So um, when um, Donna was so brilliantly reading um, the anger and the resentment coming out of it, that is the number one response when people have a body part that's giving them grief. They don't want to take the time to look at it. They just want it to get better yesterday. And then that can bring resentment if it, you know, puts a little damper on our life. So then it becomes psychological, emotional, spiritual, karmic, and physical. So when we talk about um, healing holistically, we come at it from all those angles. She might consider a massage therapist. She might consider getting um, a Akashic record reading, and she might consider doing a little supplementation or some lovely anti-inflammatory, natural anti-inflammatories or something. So um, I loved Donna's answer. I thought it was brilliant and very informative. That was all I had to Oh, that was beautiful, Jenny. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I always tell people is that if you have a physical issue or Um, We were mentioning before that sometimes people don't have the money to go to healers or acupuncturists or alternatives or spend money on alternative therapies. So I always tell people, you can always call in your angels at night before you go to bed. And I do this. And I usually do this when um, maybe I've gone somewhere or worked on someone and I get entities. Their, their attachments come to me. Even though I try to protect myself, they, I still do absorb them. And I always call in the angels. I call in Raphael and Ariel. And I ask them to remove, well, when I'm working on myself, I ask them to cleanse all of my bodies, you know, my multidimensional bodies from the etheric to the physical, astral, mental, you know, emotional. But Um, if you have a physical issue, you can call in your angels, your highest and best healing angels, and ask them to work on it in your dream state, and they will. And you'll notice that it will improve over time. Um, Or, you you know, it's just something to try. You know, just be open and and let them work with you. Absolutely. I do that, too. I always call them in and ask them to help me. And then again, they can because they're there, they're ready, they're ready to help us. Like, you know, because of our laws of free will, you have to ask them, you know, it can be silent in your head, it can be out loud, but as long as you're connecting with them energetically and, and truly asking their permission, they're ready to jump in and help you. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say that I've been doing too, even though we can't scientifically prove it yet or whatever, our cells within our bodies can hear us. We are so connected. And if you talk to your body and ask it to heal, I've had a chronic ankle injury for like 10 years and I tear it and I tear it and I tear it and I end up like I'm like on the verge of surgery for it but now it's been healing because I've been over the past six months talking to my angels talking to my body talking to my ankle asking the cells in it to heal asking it to repair 
and it's working. So never underestimate the power of what you can call in spiritually and what you can do within yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very, very true. And also I feel, you know, as we're ascending, we are going into our light bodies. And so we are crystalline in nature and um, the physicality, the, the dense physicality that, that we came in with is leaving. So also as we go through this process and we're getting um, these codes by the sun, I think that, that we are releasing these karmic issues and our, uh, the pains in our body and our emotional pains just as a byproduct of ascension as well. But I love that idea, Jenny. I'm going to do that because I have a problem <laughs> with my toes. So I'm going to talk to the cells in my toe. Thank you. <laughs> good, good. Donna, do you have, um, do you have, speaking of angels, you know, you seem to be very connected with them. You are very connected with them. Do you have any messages or any knowledge you want to share with our listeners in regards to the angels? Um, sure, yeah. So uh, mainly I work with the four archangels. When I do a reading, I call in the four archangels. And uh, I'm a straight channel. So that means I just go into an altered, like if I'm walking down the street, I'm not getting a lot of information on people. I'm not picking up psychic information on people or anything like that because uh, they have me veiled, you know, for the most part. I mean, sometimes there's exceptions to that rule. But um, what happens is I'll just go into an altered state of consciousness and then the angels come in and, and they take over my voice and they, they speak through me. Um, so I don't, I've seen angels though. I know they exist because I have seen them. Um, but I don't see them every time I do a reading, you know. Um, I went to... India, I guess, in 1999, so almost 20 years ago. And I have a lot of Indian karma, you know, that's my spiritual homeland. And I've had many lives there. I think I have, I mean, I, I, I remember a few of my lifetimes, I, because um, I might see something if someone's working on me on the table, or um, I see a lot at night in my dream state. And I've seen a few of my past lives. And as as the impressions are being released, I'll, I'll see it. Um, but I went to India and I was there for a while, a couple months. And I went into this building and I looked on the wall and there was a picture of a guru. And I was like, Oh, that's me. <laughs> God, you are crazy. Like I thought you are really, you've really lost it this time. But what happened was that night, um, and I just dismissed it like I, you, you're totally nuts. And then that night, though, I um, got lifted out of my body and I went really high. I used to astral travel a lot. I don't do that so much anymore. And uh, I went into this dining room and I looked around and there were angels there with wings, translucent, beautiful. Well, you know different looking you know and they said yes that was you and I was like huh I, I, I couldn't I was just amazed that I was seeing angels and um, so they started talking to me and everything you hear about angels is true they're lovely joyful um, sweet you know they're just pure and so they were telling me, yeah, that was true. That was you in another lifetime. And then they had wings and then the wings disappeared. And there were about maybe nine of them or 12 of them, mainly female. And then they looked just like people. And um, I've worked on people here that I've gotten the message. They're angels. You know, they are literally angels from the angelic realm incarnated as humans. As a matter of fact, there are archangels incarnated here. Now, I never used to believe that until I got those messages working on people. Um, so to me, that's pretty interesting. Um, but anyhow, so, so I know that they exist because I've seen them. And so, and you can firsthand direct experience, that's the thing that will prove anything to you, right? So, but basically, I 
I channel the archangels, and um, they're just amazing beings that help people with anything under the sun. <laughs> you need help, call an angel. Um, but sure, I, I mean, it, I would be happy to channel an angel if you like or whatever you want. Sure. That would be, be awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I love that you touched on the, the earth angel concept too, because it's something that, you know, kind of goes back and forth, but I, I feel a lot of that energy too. So I loved that you touched on that and absolutely. I welcome whatever they want to, whatever kind of little messages they want to give us are just, are just so wonderful. So thank you, Donna. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, is there anyone in particular that you would like to hear from? Um, I usually kind of stick with the with the four. I mean, I, I dabble with them all, but I definitely stick with the uh, the four archangels the most. And Michael's always a good one because so many people are connected with him and and have a relationship with him. Um, and then okay. yeah, and I always feel like Gabriel always has something to say too, but I don't know. <laughs> you would know. No, no, that sounds good actually. Um, okay, so I'll see who wants to come through. I'm going to call them in, and this is. This is usually how I um, uh, start a reading. So at this time, I call in the archangels. I call in Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Ariel, and Archangel Gabriel. I ask for 10,000 warrior protection angels around everybody in this space, listening on the radio and around Mandy and Jenny and myself blocking all negative entities, energies, and thought forms. I ask if anything's released during the session, that it go directly to source. And I ask that my um, channeling be overseen and overlit by Jesus Christ. I ask that my words be clear, accurate, helpful, and loving. Amen. Amen. Okay. And so at this time, I'm going to bring through... So Archangel Raphael would like to come forth, and then we'll see if anyone else wants to speak. So at this time, I bring in Archangel Raphael, and I ask him to take over my voice. Amen. Hello, it is Archangel Raphael, and I am very, very gladdened to be here with you tonight. We are, of course, here with you all as you are listening to the show and um, receiving our energy. I am here to tell you that you will be healed. You will be healed. If you are undergoing any type of physicality that is not ideal at this time, know that it is happening as a way for you to release anything that's blocking you from your highest self. As you ascend, it is almost as though different parts of your body are activated as the ascension energies come through so that you can um, move forward in your destiny. We are here to help you with this. Um, all of you are progressing very beautifully and very quickly right now and so know that as you release you can hasten the process by calling us in Archangel Raphael for any physical ailments Archangel Ariel for any emotional ailments and handing directly anything that you are experiencing that's bringing you pain or distress as you go through your day and someone triggers you, gives you uh, some grief or some upset, immediately turn it over to the angels as this is our duty, obligation, and love as we are here to support you in your ascension. We only say this as a reminder so that you do not carry around any extra baggage that you do not need to. We are here to help you. Um, and this is something that can be done easily, quickly, 
and effectively. So please utilize us, get in the practice of turning over all of your um, pain, grief, or stress during the day. And as you do this, notice how much your life improves very, very quickly. It will be a fast turnaround as honestly what is happening is that um, as you're ascending and going into the high light, um, you, can, you can release things very um, much quicker, much more in mass than was possible previously. So take advantage of this and bring in our energy as much as you can because why suffer? Okay. And so that's his message. And now I bring in Archangel Michael and I ask him to say a few words. We are here with you, always, eternally. We are here to bring you all of the help and guidance and energy that you need in this, for many of you, last lifetime on planet Gaia. Consider us the transition team, the team that will help you go from here to there, from the third dimension to the fifth dimension and beyond. I have a legion or legions of angels that work with me, and we can easily um, be there instantaneously. I can be many places at one time, and all of my angels can come through to help you at any time. You are ultimately protected. I come today to bring you glad tidings and tidings of joy and hope because I want to let you know that the ascension is going to go into quick, quick um, acceleration in the spring of 2018. In fact, there is a timeline option that makes it possible for you to really shift dimensionally onto the new earth in 2018. We are praying and hoping that humanity takes this road and brings the light and grounds it into the new earth. So just know that your angels are all around you all the time, helping you, guiding you, loving you, and We are here for you, but our energy can come in much more strongly if you directly invoke us. So please do that as much as you can. And with this, I say adieu, and I want to let you know that we love you infinitely, eternally, forevermore, and we will be reunited again. And let us take your fear And let your fear guide you no more. Okay. So um, this is Donna Carroll and I'm back. And I will say this, that I've never done a radio show before. So (laughs) I was a little nervous about channeling and and whatnot. So you did perfect. (laughs) That was brilliant information. so beautiful. And I felt so like, I felt like sun kissed, like so warm as you were speaking. Um, that energy came through so strongly. So thank you so much, Donna. That was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but the angels are, you know, if it weren't for the angels, honestly, I consider the angels my friends. I, you know, I love them. I I depend on them, and if it weren't for angelic energy, I don't know how I would how I would go about my day. You know, they make me happy, they make me feel protected, they make me feel included, and it's just it's just a huge blessing to have them in my life. And 
I wish that for everybody, everybody to have the connection to the angel because it just, it just transforms your world, you know? Because I'm thinking back to when I didn't have that connection and it's like night and day. Mm. Yeah. Donna, you should tell everyone how they can contact you in case they'd like a private reading or a private channeling. How can, how can someone get a hold of you to get a session? Oh, sure. Yeah. The best way to contact me is to email me. I do have a website, but it's, it's a long website. So the best way is to contact me through email. And my email is crystalhealer555 at gmail.com. So it's one word, crystalhealer555 at gmail.com. And um, basically in my readings, some people come in with questions, but basically I'll just go into a, a, a very light trance and they'll bring in galactic origins, uh, past life information, uh, relationship information, sometimes physical healing, just depends. But um, if people have specific questions, I ask the guides for the answers as well. Brilliant. Beautiful. And uh, yes, if you want to get a hold of Jenny or I, you can email us directly at thealchemysisters at gmail.com. You can also follow our Facebook page, The Alchemy Sisters. We love what we're building on there, and we always share lots of extra little tidbits, and we can message you back. And uh, yes, thank you so much for everyone who joined us tonight, and thank you especially to Donna. Thank you for being with us and for all the support you gave and for, you know, explaining to everybody just how much the angels are here to help, as well as Mother Goddess and um, the Lumeria information was just fascinating. So thank you. Oh, sure. Well, it was my pleasure. I really appreciate the opportunity to um, channel and to um, talk on your show. I love your. Sh- I love the the name, the Alchemy Sisters. That's awesome. <laughs> So um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We appreciate you. Jenny, any closing thoughts before we sign on out? I don't think so. I think that's a wrap. I guess it was a beautiful show. We got some channeling. We got some psychic work. We got some information about Lemuria. Full show. I appreciate it. It was a good time. Thank you, ladies. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Oh, wonderful. With that said, have a wonderful night. All the love and light to everyone. Take care. Goodbye. What if you could change your life? What if the sorrow could become joy and the darkness the light? What if you could heal not only yourself but those around you? Well, you can. This is Alchemy, and these are the Alchemy Sisters. Join psychic Jenny McDaniel and spiritual advisor Mandy Elam for a magical one-hour journey into esoteric spiritual discussions. DPR presents...